So you want to be a web developer or a front-end engineer in 2018, but you don't exactly know where to start. Well, keep watching because that's what this video is all about. So I filmed a video last year in November of 2016 about this same topic, but it's 2017 and almost 2018 now and some things have changed. So I thought I would update this video for the new year. So I'm gonna split this video up into two parts. The first part is going to be the no-nonsense, must-have, no argument, have-to-have skills to become a front-end engineer or web developer. And then the second part is going to take a little bit of research on your end to pick up the skills that are gonna suit you best in your job search where you are. So there are three technologies that you absolutely have to understand to get a job as a web developer or a front-end engineer. Those those three right off the bat are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So what exactly are those? HTML is the most basic technology on the internet. I have a whole video about it. You can find it up here on one of these cards. I don't, I never remember which corner the cards go in. So HTML is the structure of a website and it holds all of the content. It is literally the backbone of the internet. You have to have HTML skills to put things on the internet. Luckily for us, HTML is pretty simple and you can get a website up and running in just HTML in a matter of minutes. It's really quick to learn and it takes a little bit longer to master, but nothing too crazy. After you have a grasp of HTML, the next thing to move on to is going to be CSS. Now, what is CSS? Just like HTML, I have a video going deep into that and I will link it as again, one of these corners, don't know which one. CSS is the styles behind the content of the website. It's what makes your website look pretty. You can do animations, change font size, change colors, background colors, add borders, all of those fancy things with CSS. And you're going to wanna to know how to use CSS to make websites look nice if you wanna be a web developer or a front-end engineer. The third no argument, no nonsense skill that you have to have to be a web developer or a front-end engineer is JavaScript. JavaScript is the programming language of the web and it is used immensely throughout all of the internet. So now that we know what the three skills are that we absolutely have to have to become a web developer, how do we get there? How do we learn them? My first step, if I was trying to learn web development in 2018, would be to go to Codecademy. If I've never looked at code at all, I would go to Codecademy and I would take their basic HTML, CSS course and see if it's something that I even enjoy, right? You wanna make sure that you're not investing a ton of money and time into this and then find out that you actually hate it. And Codecademy is completely free for their basic courses and you can go there and you can get a solid basic knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript all through Codecademy. I will be the first one to tell you, if you wanna become a web developer, it is completely possible to do it all for free. Finding free resources online, like Codecademy, like Free Code Camp, and random tutorials and blogs that are out there online. However, if you wanna learn quickly, it's usually a little bit easier to pay for a product or service to kickstart your knowledge and to actually dive deep into these subjects a little bit quicker. My two big suggestions for learning HTML, CSS, or JavaScript on a paid platform are going to be Team Treehouse and Udemy. Team Treehouse is a resource that has a ton of courses covering a multitude of subjects, not just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And they have a really good basic web development course that you can run through. It does cost money, like I said, but you can go on there and sign up for a free trial and try it out and see if it fits your learning style. The most important thing is to find a resource that fits who you are and actually teaches you things. Full disclosure, if you want to sign up for an account on Treehouse, I have links in the description to this video below. If you click on them and go through my link, I do get paid for that. Team Treehouse isn't paying me to say any of this stuff. It's just something that I trust and that I've used in the past to pick up skills when it comes to web development. The other option for learning web development in 2018 that I endorse because I've used it personally is Udemy. And they have a multitude of courses and they range from good to not so good. So you wanna make sure that you do your research. Each course is rated and just try to find something that has a really good rating. I have some suggestions down below with links on courses that I think are good, that I've personally used, that I've used the instructors for other topics and things like that. If you click those and you sign up for those, I also get a little bit of money for that. So I just wanna be completely clear here. Once again, Udemy's not paying me to say any of this stuff, but these are courses that I've used in the past that have been helpful for me in my journey in this web development field. So we've knocked out HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Those are things that you can't argue with. You have to know those technologies. I've said that like a hundred times already in this video, but I just really wanna drill home that point because it is entirely true. So now, where 
do we go from here? And before we go into some of the more advanced or new frameworks and libraries for JavaScript, I just need to touch on one thing, and that thing is jQuery. In the past, jQuery has been an essential skill for web developers and web app developers, and it is still pretty important these days. However, a lot of people are choosing to move away from jQuery. Learning vanilla JavaScript will serve you way better, especially in the beginning when you're just getting into this thing, than picking up jQuery. That's not to say that you won't use jQuery on a daily basis for the job that you end up getting, a lot of places still have a lot of jQuery code, and having an understanding of it is important. And I wouldn't suggest completely shying away from it, but I also would suggest not spending all of your time learning jQuery and thinking that's the best way for you to find a job in 2018. If you can master vanilla JavaScript, you will be way better suited in your learning of other frameworks and libraries, like Angular, React, Vue, and all the other ones, than you would if you spent all of your time learning jQuery query. So that's why I suggest learning vanilla JavaScript first. And there's a really, really good free resource on vanilla JavaScript called JavaScript 30. It is authored by a guy named Wes Boss, and he is a total and absolute beast when it comes to this stuff. If you want, I link that down below too. It's completely free. You don't have to pay for it. And if you want to take your JavaScript knowledge to a deeper understanding and understand how it works more under the hood, as opposed to just, you know, learning array functions and things like that, there's a course on Udemy that I endorse. 1,000 times over. It's something that I've taken and I've come back to over and over again because it's such a valuable resource for me. And that's called JavaScript Understanding the Weird Parts. It's linked below. That one does cost money and like I said, I'll get paid a little bit if you do click on it. But it is very, very, very valuable. So now it's time to talk about everyone's most favorite part about JavaScript in 2018, and that's frameworks and libraries. There are a hundred million of them, and a new one comes out every time I finish a sentence in this video. And with all of these different technologies out there, it can be really, really hard to decide which one you should learn to become job ready. So how do I suggest you do it? My personal opinion is that you shouldn't listen to my opinion about which framework or library is the best. And you probably shouldn't listen to all of the experts on the internet or the one Medium article that you read about the best JavaScript framework. And the reason for that is it doesn't matter which one is the best if your goal is to find a job. Now, if you just want to do freelance work or build side projects, then you can listen to those kind of people. But if you are just trying to find a job, what you need to do is you need to do research. You need to go on LinkedIn, Stack Overflow, Indeed, and any other job board out there and find out what people are actually using in your area, what people are hiring for, because that's what is going to set you up the best for finding a job. If everybody is using Angular and you learn React, then you cut your job prospects by a ton and you should just start from the beginning with what is popular in your area. The JavaScript ecosystem is wild right now. It can be completely and totally overwhelming because there are new technologies and new resources every day that pop up and it's hard to keep up with for somebody working in the field so I can only imagine how hard it is for somebody who's trying to break into the field. But understanding that where you are matters and what you should learn is a really important thing to understand. Your job market where you are dictates what you should learn, in my opinion, if you're trying to find a job. So do your research, find out if it's Angular, if it's Vue, if it's React, if it's something else, and learn that technology. I'm going to make the same suggestion that I made before when it comes to learning this stuff. Team Treehouse has a lot of really good courses on all of the popular frameworks in JavaScript right now. And also Udemy has some really awesome in-depth courses when it comes to the popular frameworks. The big three, the most popular three frameworks that I see in my area and across the country are going to be Angular, React, and now Vue. Now, as a small sidebar on Angular, the Angular ecosystem is split. There was Angular 1 and Angular 1 was a really, really popular framework for a really long time. It was kind of the first big one, and a lot of people used it to build a lot of really awesome things that are still in use right now, and people are still hiring Angular 1 developers to maintain that code. But Angular 1 is deprecated. They aren't updating it anymore. So people are trying to find new technologies to replace it with. And the Angular 2 came out, and then they skipped 3, and then Angular 4 came out, and then Angular 5 is out now. and so there's this kind of big staircase stepping stone to get to the Angular knowledge that's the newest, but 
there's not always jobs in that newest technology. So be really careful when you see Angular on a job description to try to understand, are they talking about AngularJS, the old version, or are they talking about Angular, the kind of new place that they've put themselves in? And now a small sidebar on React. React has become really popular over the past year, and I see it continuing to grow into 2018. But React is typically not used on its own. React is very lightweight, and it doesn't come with a lot of the things that you're going to need to really build out a fully functional web application. So people layer stuff on top of React, and the two big ones are Redux and React Router. Now, if you're completely new to all of this, you may not understand what I'm about to say, but understand that it's important for me to say it. Redux is a piece of technology that is used with React, but is not React, and it's a state management tool, which is something that is essential for React apps, especially as they grow and to scale them. So Redux is a very important and integral part of learning React, and so if you're going to buy a course on React, I would almost always say make sure that it has a Redux component to it. React Router is also a separate technology that you have to link separately in a web application. And it's also something that's really important and widely used. So if you're buying a React course, I would suggest making sure that it has a React Router component to it. Or if not, make sure that you do some research and learn React Router because it's an essential skill if you're using React Redux and React Router to build a web application. As far as Vue goes, it's the new hotness when it comes to JavaScript libraries and frameworks. And I haven't worked with it much. There aren't a lot of jobs for Vue in my area, so I haven't done much research on it. But it is up and coming, and it's something to keep in mind with where you live, if they're hiring for Vue developers, then that would be something that you should invest your time, energy, and money on if that's what's going to get you a job. So now that we've talked about JavaScript libraries and frameworks, what are other things that you can learn to stand out from the crowd when it comes to trying to find this first job? I would suggest taking your HTML and CSS skills to the next level. Understanding semantic HTML and then CSS technologies like preprocessors, SAS, and less, or frameworks for CSS like Bootstrap or Foundation is going to be something that you'll probably need to have on the job. And it may not be inherently part of a job description, but it's something that will elevate your skills to the next level and actually give you a leg up over a lot of self-taught developers. And if you aren't in a super big rush to find your first job and you want to take your skill set to the next level over other front-end developers and self-taught web developers, then the thing that I would suggest learning is a back-end technology. Now, you don't need to be a total badass back-end developer, but having an understanding of those things is definitely going to make you shine a little bit brighter when it comes to you versus other applicants for a front-end position. Things I would suggest to learn on the back end side, if you are in a place where Angular and the mean stack are really popular, then having an understanding of Node, MongoDB, and Express are really, really important and they can set you apart from the crowd. If you're not in an area where that's popular, do more research. Do they love Ruby on Rails where you're at? Do they love PHP? Do they love .NET? Having a basic understanding of those things and being able to look at that code and generally understand what's going on is going to be something that you will differentiate yourself and it will hold very, very good value for you in your search for a job. All right, that's all I have for how to become a web developer or front end engineer in 2018. I hope this helped and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to hit that like button because they are super awesome and they make me smile. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I respond to pretty much every comment that I ever get. So if you have questions, if you need me to point you in a direction, leave it down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to follow along in my journey through this career path. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you again very soon. Bye.